from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering Veritas Vision 2017. Brought to you by Veritas. Veritas Vision 2017, everybody. We're here at the Aria Hotel. This is day two of the Cube's coverage of Vitas hashtag Vitas Vision. And this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stuart Miniman, who is my co-host for the week. Stu, we heard Richard Branson this morning, the uh, world-renowned entrepreneur, Sir Richard Branson, came up from the British Virgin Islands, where he lives, he lives in the uh, Caribbean, and uh, evidently he was holed out during the hurricane in his wine cellar, uh, but he was able to make it up here uh, for the keynote, we saw on Twitter, that was, so he's a great keynote, we'll talk about that a little bit. We saw on Twitter that he actually stopped by the Hitachi event, uh, Hitachi Next, and for women in, in, in tech, uh, uh, a little mini event that they had over there. So pretty cool guy. Uh, some of the takeaways, I mean, he talked a lot about, uh, well first of all, welcome to day two. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, and I mean, people are pretty excited. You know, that sometimes they bring in kind of those those marquee guests, someone that's going to get everybody to say, "Okay, wait, it's day two. I want to get up early. You know, get in the groove." Uh, and yeah, t some really interesting topics. I mean, talking about. Uh, y y you know, thinking about the community at large, uh, you know, one, one of the things I loved, he talked about, you know, I've got all of these, you know, I've got hotels, I've got different things, we draw a circle around it. Think about the community, think about the schools that are there, think about, you know, if there's people that don't have homes, you know, all these things to giving back to the community, he says we can all do our piece there, and talking about sustainable business. Mm -hmm. so. we, I mean, I, as far as, I mean, we do a lot of these, as you know, and, and as far as the keynote speakers go, I thought he was one of the better ones, certainly one of the bigger names, I mean, some of the ones that we've seen in the past that I think are comparable. But Bill Clinton at Dell World 2012 was <laughs> was was pretty well, pretty there's, epic. There, there, there's there's a reason that Bill Clinton is you know known as the orator that he is. Yeah, and, yeah. and so he was quite good. And, and then Robert Gates, uh, both at ServiceNow and and Nutanix, uh, Condi Rice at Nutanix, both very impressive. Malcolm Gladwell, who's been on the Cube, um, and, and and Nate Silver, who's also been on the Cube, again very impressive. Thomas Friedman, we've seen you know at the IBM shows. Uh, the author, the guy who wrote uh, the Jobs book, uh, very, very oh, strong. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, help uh, Walter me. Isaacson. Walter Isaacson yeah. was at, uh, at Tableau. So yeah. you've seen some. Yeah, I've seen Elon Musk, uh, you know, also at the Dell show. Oh, so. I didn't see Elon. Yeah, I okay. think that was so, the year you so, didn't come. So. So, so I'd say Branson, from the ones I've seen, I don't know how he compared to Musk, was, was probably the best I think I've ever seen. Very inspirational, talking about uh, the disaster. They had really well thought out and, and well produced videos that he sort of laid in. The first one was sort of a commercial for Richard Branson and who he was and you know how he's you know, his passion for changing the world and and which is <laughs> it was so genuine. And then a lot of stuff on on the disaster in the British Virgin Islands. I mean, the total devastation, you know. Uh, uh, and then he uh, and then he sort of went into his passion for entrepreneurism, what what he sees as an entrepreneur. As he sort of defined it as somebody who wants to make the world a better place, you know, innovations, disruptive innovations to make the world a better place, and then had a sort of interesting, you know, Q&A uh, yeah. session yeah, I mean, with and, and, Lynn and Lucas. One of the, the, the lines he said, you know, people, you don't like go out with the idea that I'm going to be a businessman, it's I want to go out, I want to build something, I want to create something. Uh, I, I, lo I love one of the, the early anecdotes he said when uh, he was in school mm -hmm. and he had, uh, what was it, a newsletter or something he was writing uh, mm -hmm. against the Vietnam War and uh, the, the, the school said, well, you can either stay in school or you can keep doing your thing. He said, well, that choice is easy, bye-bye. And uh, that when, when he's leaving, they said, well, you're either going to be end up in jail or be a millionaire, we're not sure. And he said, well, what do you know? I ended up doing both, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> so he is quite a character and just, you know, very understated, but he's got this aura that allows him to be understated and still appear as a sort of mega personality. Um, you know, so he, he talked about, uh, actually some of the interesting things he said about, you know, rebuilding after Irma. Obviously you got to build stronger homes. And he really sort of pounded reducing the reliance on fossil fuels. Um, and you know, can't be the same old, same old, basically calling for a Marshall Plan for the Caribbean. One of the things that struck me, and, and he got, you know, it's a tech audience, generally a, a more liberal audience, he got you know, some, some fond you know, applause for that. Um, but he said, you know, you guys are about data, and you, you, you don't just ignore data. And one of the data points that he threw out was that the Atlantic Ocean at some points during Irma was 86 degrees, which is, which is quite astounding. Um, so, you know, he's basically saying time to make a commitment for, to the, 
to not retreat from the Paris Agreement. Uh, and then, you know, he also talked about, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, and building a company that, you know, taking note of the little things, he said, makes a big difference. And talking about open cultures, letting people work from home, letting people take, you know, unpaid sabbaticals. He did say unpaid. Um, and then he, he, you know, touted his new book, Finding My Virginity, which is the sequel to Losing My mm -hmm. Virginity. <laughs> so it was all, all very good, you know, some other things. To be successful, you need to learn. To learn, you need to listen. You know, sort of a, 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 an age-old bromide, but somehow it seemed to have more impact coming from uh, Branson. And then, and then, actually, Lynn Lucas asked one of the questions that I put forth was, what's his relationship with Musk and, and Bezos? And uh, he said he actually is very quite friendly with Elon. And of course, they are sort of birds of a feather with the, all three of them with the rocket ships. Uh, and he said, we don't talk much about that. We just sort of, specifically in reference to Bezos. But um, overall, yeah, yeah, I thought it was very yeah, strong. Yeah, Dave, what, what was the line I think he said? Is you, you want to be friends with your competitors, but you know, fight hard against them all day. You know, go right, drink it with them like, at night. Fight like you know? crazy during the day, <laughs> right. So that was sort of the setup. And again, I thought Lynn Lucas did a very good job. I mean, he's, I guess in one respect, he's an easy interview, because he's such, you know, when you interview these dynamic figures, they just sort of talk and they're good. Uh, but she kept the conversation going and asked some good questions and, and wasn't you know, intimidated, which you can be sometimes by those big personalities. So I, I thought that was all good. And then, then we turned into, which I was also surprised you know, and appreciative that they put Branson on first. I mean, a lot of companies would have held him to the end. Right. Said, all right, let's get everybody in the room, we'll force them to listen to our product stuff, and then we can you know, get the, the highlight, the headliner. Uh, Veritas chose to do it differently. Now maybe it was a scheduling thing, I don't know. But that was kind of cool. Go, you know, go right to where the action is. It's not like when you watch 60 Minutes, you want to see the headline show right away, and that's right. what they did. So from a content standpoint, I was appreciative of that. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And then, of course, they brought on David Noy, who we're going to have on in a little while, and went through re really uh, the update. So really it's the expansion, Dave, of their software-defined storage, the, the family of products called InfoScale, uh, yesterday we talked a bit about uh, Veritas Hyperscale. So that is, they've got the Hyperscale for OpenStack, they've got the Hyperscale uh, for containers, and then filling out the product line is the Veritas Access, which really their scale-out NAS solution, uh, including, uh, they, they, they did one of the classic unveils of Veritas software company. It was a little, little odd to, for me to be like, oh, and here's an appliance <laughs> here's with a Veritas box. bezel. <laughs> uh, partnership with Seagate. So, you know, they, 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 they said very clearly, look, <laughs> If you really want it simple and you want to come just from us and that's what you'd like, great. Here's an appliance, trusted supplier. We've put the whole thing together, but that's not going to be our primary business. That's not the main way we want to do things. We want to offer the software and you can choose your hardware piece. Uh, once again, knocking on some of those integrated hardware suppliers with the 70 points of margin. And then the last one, one of the bigger announcements of the show, is the Veritas Cloud Storage. Uh, which they're calling is uh, object storage with brains. And one thing we want to dig, dig into, those brains, you know, what, what is that functionality? Because object storage from day one always had a little bit more intelligence than the traditional storage. Metadata is usually built in, so where is the artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, you know, what is that knowledge that's kind of built into it? Uh, because, you know, I, I find, Dave, on the consumer side, I'm amazed these days as how much extra metadata and knowledge gets built into things. So, you know, on my phone, I'll start searching for things and it'll just have things appear. Um, I, I know you're not fond of the, uh, you know, automated assistants, but I've got a couple of them in my house, so I can ask them questions and they are getting smarter and smarter over in time. Uh, and they already know everything we're doing anyway, so. You know, yeah. I like the automated assistants. You know, we have, well, my kid has a, an Echo, but what concerns me, Stu, is when I am speaking to those automated assistants about, hey, you know, maybe we should take a trip to this place or that place, and then all of a sudden, the next day on my laptop, <laughs> I start to see ads for trips to that place. I start to think about, wow, this is strange. That I worry about the privacy of those systems. They're going to, they already know more about me than I know about me, but I want to come back to those, those three announcements. We're going to have David Noy on. Hyperscale, uh, access, and cloud objects. So some of the things we want to ask that we, we, we don't really know is hi, that hyperscale, is it block? Is it file? Is it, it's OpenStack specific. The, 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 right, they have the two general. flavors. One right. one's for OpenStack, and of course uh, OpenStack has a number of projects. Um, so I would think you could be able to do block and file, but would definitely love that clarification. And then they have a different one for containers. Um, and, and, and okay. So, yeah. so but I, I kind of don't understand that, right? Because is it OpenStack containers, yeah. or is it Linux containers, yeah. or 
Well, it, containers are always going to be on Linux, and containers can fit with OpenStack, but we've got their chief product officer, and we've got so David we'll Noyk, so we'll, 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 we'll dig into all of those. And then, yeah, the access piece, you know, after the apocalypse, there are going to be three things left in this world. <laughs> Cockroaches, mainframes, and Dot Hill Raid Arrays. So, you know, Seagate was up on stage. Seagate bought this company called Dot Hill, which has been around longer than I have. And, uh, and so, like you said, that was kind of strange seeing a, a, an appliance unveil from the software company. But hey, they, they need boxes to run on this stuff. Um, it was interesting, too, the engineer Abhijit came out and they talked about software defined. And we've been doing software defined, is what he said, you know, before the term, way before the term ever came out. It's true, Veritas was if not the first, one of the first software-defined storage companies. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, the problem back then was, was there were always scaling issues, there were performance issues, and now with the advancements in microprocessor and DRAM and, and, and flash technologies, you know, software defined is, you know, there's plenty of horsepower oh, yeah. underneath well, it. Well, Dave, yeah, 15 years ago, the, the FUD from every storage company was, you can't trust storage functionality just on some generic server. Reminds me back, you know, I go back 20 years, it was like, oh, you wouldn't run some mission critical thing on Windows. You know, it's, it's always, that's not ready for prime time, it's not enterprise grade, and now, of course, everybody's on the software defined bandwagon. Well, and, and of course, when you talk to the hardware companies, and you call them hardware companies, specifically HPE and, and, and Dell EMC as examples, and you know, Lenovo, et cetera. Yeah. Lenovo not so much, yeah. the Chinese mm -hmm. sort of embraced hardware. And even hardware. Hitachi's trying to rebrand themselves, uh, you know, to, to, very much a, a hardware company, but they, they've got software assets. Uh, well, you so when, when, you, and when you worked at EMC, I mean, you know, when you sat down and talked to the guys like Brian Gallagher, he would stress, oh, all my guys, all my engineers are software engineers. You know, we don't, we're not a hardware company, but, you know, so, there's a nuance there, right? It's sort of more the delivery and the, the culture and the ethos, uh, which I think defines the software culture, and of course the gross margins. And then of course the, the cloud object piece. Um, we want to understand what's different from, you know, object storage embeds metadata in the data, um, and obviously is a lower cost sort of option. Think of S3 as the sort of poster child for cloud object storage. Um, and so Veritas as an arms dealer, is putting their hat in the ring, kind of late, right? I mean, there's you know, a lot of object going on out there, but, but it's not really taken off other than with the cloud guys. So, I mean, you got a few object guys around there. Clever Safe got bought up by IBM, Scality's still around, you know, doing some stuff with HPE. Um, so it really hasn't even taken off yet, so maybe the timing's not so bad. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and you know, love, love to hear some of the use cases, what their customers are doing. Um, yeah, I mean, Dave, if we poke one, one critique, saw a lot of partners up on stage, but uh, not as many customers. Usually expect a few more customers to be out there. Part of it is they're launching some new products, not talking about uh, you know, very much the, the, the products that they've had in there. I know in the breakouts there are a lot of customers here, but uh, well, you know, would, would have liked to see a few more uh, early customers front and center. Well, I think that's the key issue for this company, Stu, is that, that we talked about this at the close yesterday, is how do they transition that legacy install base to the new platform? Uh, you know, Bill Coleman said, it's ours to lose. And I think that's right. And so the answer for a company like that, and the playbook is clear, go private, so you don't have to you know, get exposed to the 90 day shot clock. Invest, build out a modern platform. He talked about microservices and you know, modern uh, 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 development platform. And you know, create products that people want and migrate people over. You're in a position to do that. So, but you're right, when you talk to the customers here, it's their net backup customers. I mean, that's really what they're doing and they're here to sort of learn, learn about best practice and see where they're going. Net backup, I think 8.1 was announced this week, so you know, people are glomming onto that, but you know, the vast majority of the revenue of this company is from their you know, existing legacy enterprise business. That's a transition that has to take place. Luckily, it doesn't have to take place in the public eye from a financial standpoint. But, um, so they can you know, have some patient capital and work through it. All right, Stu, um, lineup today, uh, a lot of product stuff. Uh, we got Jason Buffington coming on, forget the analyst perspective. So we'll be here all day. Uh, last word? Yeah, uh, and ending the day with Foreigner. Uh, it feels like the first time we're here. Uh, <laughs> Veritas feels hot-blooded. Uh, uh, we'll keep rolling. Uh, uh. All right, <laughs> luckily we're not seeing double vision. All right, <laughs> keep right there, everybody. We'll be back right after this short break. This is theCUBE, we're live from Veritas Vision 2017 in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. <laughs>